Dear colleagues, as we unfortunately had to cancel this year's World Congress in Montreal, we thought it would be a good idea to at least share some highlights from the virtual Congress that took place in February. Before the video starts, I would like to announce that the 2022 World Congress in Taipei, Taiwan will take place from June 9th to the 12th. I look forward to seeing you there in person and now please enjoy the video. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel below for free so you can watch more videos in the next weeks. Thank you. Hello, my name is Georg Hans, and the topic of my talk is effects of sex hormones on serotonergic neurotransmission. But what is crucial for my talk is that uh, these um, key players of the serotonergic system are influenced by sex hormones, by estrogen and testosterone, here uh, denoted in red and blue arrows. And this already nicely summarizes my talk. Uh, moving on to serotonin receptors, most studies here investigated um, the 5-HT1A and the 5-HT2A receptor, the most important inhibitory and most important excitatory receptor subtype of the serotonergic system. Um, looking at the 1A receptor, we find uh, both positive and negative effects of estrogen as well as testosterone on 1A uh, receptor expression, although um, relatively more studies show a, pos a, a negative effect um, and other studies show that this effect on the 1A seems to uh, have antidepressant effects, is dependent on the 1A. To conclude, we may say um, there is roughly agreement that estrogen and also testosterone uh, inhibits the 1A receptor expression. Um, for the 2A receptor exp um, expression, uh, the other way, uh, it's the other way around. There is, seems to be a positive effect of estrogen as well as of testosterone on 5-HT2A receptor expression. And finally, there is also some studies on the 5-HT3 receptor showing that estrogen as well as testosterone seems to inhibit um, receptor function and receptor expression. So to conclude, um, differential effects of sex hormones depending on which uh, receptor we are looking at. Which um, Now I move to human studies and I will focus on um, uh, uh, molecular imaging studies. Um, and I will start with synthesis, serotonin synthesis again. Here, unfortunately, there is no study so far that looked into this directly look, looking into the effects of uh, hormones in terms of treatment, treatment studies directly, there is only studies looking at this indirectly by, for example, comparing females and males, and um, they 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 are not consistent. So some studies showed uh, that, for example, uh, females have increased um, values um, when investigated with the carbon eleven labeled tracer um, um, alpha methyl tryptophan. Um, and other studies show that um, females have lower levels compared to males. And uh, finally, there is also studies that show that um, this uh, sex difference is depending, dependent on the brain region. So to conclude, there is no consistent uh, uh, result here from these indirect studies. Um, now I come to my final part, implications for psychiatry. <clears throat> Um, so, so far what we have seen is that um, uh, estrogen as well as testosterone um, seems to affect um, serotonergic neurotransmission on different uh, points of action. Most consistent results are, are observed for 5-HT degradation. So these hormones seems to inhibit degradation and um, seems to increase serotonin synthesis, which also um, explains our results of an increased serotonin transporter because the serotonin transporter is usage dependent. So if there is more serotonin, release more serotonin in the synaptic cleft, then also the serotonin transporter will be upregulated. Now, what are the um, endophenotypes of depression? Um, studies convincingly showed that uh, depression is associated with elevated MAO-A. Um, here most prominently by Jeff Meyer in 2006. And other studies showed um, that the serotonin transporter seems to be reduced in major depression as shown in a meta-analysis that we have uh, conducted a few years ago. 
So um, to summarize, this uh, could indicate that uh, sex hormones exhibit antidepressant effects via influencing the serotonergic, uh, neuro, uh, serotonergic system. Thank you for inviting me uh, to this conference and to give a talk in uh, the symposium. My name is Sarah Burke. I work as a senior researcher at the Department of Psychiatry at the University Medical Center in Groningen, which is a town in the northern part of the Netherlands. And since my PhD project, um, uh, which I conducted at the Center of Expertise on Gender Dysphoria in Amsterdam already a couple of years ago, um, I specialized in neuroimaging research. And my studies include individuals with gender identity problems with, with a focus on the young population, so children and adolescents. In recent years, there have been exponential increases in referrals of adolescents to specialized gender identity services, and this is a pattern that we see around the world. Um, it is of note, as you can see here in this graph, um, Across the years, there's this increase, and this yellow part uh, are adolescent girls. So it is of note that this the large increase in referrals is for a great deal uh, due to girls having apparently gender identity problems. Um, it has been suggested that this rise in referrals may be due to increased media attention for the gender uh, for the transgender topic, but presently, actually. Um, not much is understood about the underlying neurobiology, so the uh, etiology of gender dysphoria. And together with this large increase in referrals uh, comes uh, an increase, of course, also for requests for medical treatments. Um, in particular for the young group uh, of individuals with gender dysphoria, adolescents, uh, since their introduction during the 1990s uh, in the Netherlands, puberty suppression treatment by means of uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs, so GNRHA, um, followed by gender affirming hormone treatment, uh, has become the treatment of choice for adolescents with gender dysphoria. Um, Adolescents, in order to start with puberty suppression treatment, have to have at least some initial physical development for being allowed to start. Uh, and then GnRHA suppresses any further development of the secondary sex characteristics, which of course is so distressing for them. Thereby, uh, the treatment importantly contributes to improvement in adolescents' general mental health and well being. Um, however, while these short-term benefits um, are evident, there is uh, a lack of studies actually investigating the long-term uh, effects puberty suppression might have on uh, brain developmental changes. Um, and so it is unknown um, whether the treatment in the long run might uh, actually have also negative effects on adolescence development. Then after my PhD project in 2015, I moved to Stockholm, working at the Karolinska Institute, together with uh, Dr. Ivan Kasavik and Jamie Feusner, a collaborator at UCLA. And we developed a novel fMRI paradigm that could measure individual differences in own body perception and associated brain activations. Um, in our so-called body morph test, participants had to indicate uh, to what degree a given picture of the participant's body uh, was e that was either unmorphed, like here, 0% morphed, um, or morphed to various degrees to either the female or male um, body, to how, how much uh, the participant considered uh, this picture um, him or herself, um, resembled their perception of self. Um, and on the behavioral level, uh, 
we found clear differences. Um, so for this task, we, we of course, we compared a group of cisgender and group of transgender uh, adults in this case. Um, and we found on the behavioral level clear differences between these groups. Um, the cis groups identified more with the bodies of their own sex and the trans groups identified clearly with the opposite sex. Uh, and also in terms of brain activation, there were clear group, group differences in brain regions known to process self and own body awareness. So by now, several studies are in support of this novel own body perception hypothesis. Um, and these studies we have conducted since, they have kind of have shifted the view on the mechanisms underlying gender dysphoria. Um, for example, it has been found that treatment naive transgender individuals show weaker resting state functional connectivity among self-referential brain regions. Um, uh, Cross-sectional studies have found cis and transgender differences in terms of cortical thickness in regions implicated in self and own body pr uh, processing. And importantly, longitudinal evidence suggests that after uh, gender affirmative treatment, these trans-specific anatomical features reverse to the patterns seen in cisgender individuals. Uh, this treatment related change in cortical thickness um, was accompanied by changes in self-perception and a reduction of uh, experienced dysphoria. But then, um, so to sum up, um, I think um, future studies should really take a developmental neuroscience um, perspective. Um, because so far we only have seen findings of cross-sectional, we've seen cross-sectional data, uh, group sizes were relatively small. So um, longitudinal studies in developmental samples spanning wide age ranges should really confirm these preliminary data. Um, also an important question for future research to address is how um, puberty, the physical changes of the body during puberty, the hormonal changes, together with the significant social and cognitive changes during adolescence interact and how they impact gender identity development. Um, and I think in order to better understand the neurobiological mechanisms of gender dysphoria, we also need to compare um, uh, transgender groups to other conditions such as um, uh, eating disorders and also medically unexplained somatic symptoms, as these are also characterized by a subjective, different perception of self. Um, and in general, I think um, future studies should definitely acknowledge the complexity of the, um, the different developmental trajectories that all interact um, and impact um, how we think about ourselves, how we perceive ourselves and our body.